Thank you for that wonderful special. It just brought back memories. I was thinking of the first time that I ever did anything in church. Um, there was a metal chair put behind the pulpit. My grandfather and my father on either side. Song 384 in your, your hymnals, Sunlight, Sunlight. They sang the verses and I sang the chorus. And that was the only special number we had, but we would do it again and again and again. It's standing, standing on a metal chair so I could, could see over the top. But I, I so appreciated that beautiful number and uh, just, just the, the spirit of it all. But you know, I was, was thinking if I could try to categorize or describe your church, you're just comfortable. <laughs> just comfortable being able to be with you all, not... Uh, trying to impress anybody, not trying to pretend that we have to be something that we're not, uh, that we're just all at home and able to just serve the Lord, praise Him, and uh, enjoy being together. And, and you're not always in those sort of settings. <laughs> and so it is good to, to have been with you this week. And uh, I'm so glad my wife got to come along and the thrift stores are happy that she could be here also. <laughs> but we, we have... I've had a, had a good time, and uh, I want to, I want to, to thank uh, uh, Anthony and, and Marie for, for helping out with my little uh, adjustments at different times and to do something, but uh, to, to thank Brother and Sister Turner and to just urge you all to uh, do your best for whatever <laughs> they're, they're working on, because I want to tell you that there are no other pastors and pastor's wives with hearts like that that are standing on the corner. Folks that love their people and love their church. And uh, I just, I enjoy being with folks that, that have, have a desire to build God's kingdom. Let some of it rub off on me and renew my passion. And I, I, I just want to, to uh, say how much I've enjoyed being with them. And then part of our time with them has, has been as we were sitting around the table eating the wonderful food that you provided and that you uh, uh, shared with us, well, the, uh, the pumpkin dessert, just, just to name one item of uh, all the different kinds of dessert. Pumpkin's my favorite. You only get it at, at, uh, uh, in the fall. And so what a great start. I haven't had a pumpkin pie yet this year, but, but we'll look forward to it. But that was, that was a great pumpkin dessert. And uh, all the rest, um, I don't think I uh, pass up anything as I have opportunity. And uh, we just, just have, have been grateful for your support and the services. And um, as, we, as we've been here, I just, just have felt... Uh, uh, a warmness and, a, and an acceptance that just says, uh, I'm so glad I'm on the way towards heaven with you all. <laughs> that uh, we're headed the same direction and uh, looking forward to uh, making our days count here that we might spend eternity together. I'd like to uh, direct your attention once more to the scriptures as we turn to Joshua chapter number 14. Joshua chapter number 14. reading verses 6 through 9. You know, I have sometimes said that I, I may not have as many uh, stories to share as some folks because I've, I've never uh, held any camp meeting services and I've never had any hospital experiences. And I've never been in the army, and uh, <laughs> when you, you exempt all those things, and uh, you know that knocks most preachers' good stories out because <laughs> that's uh, that's where they all come from. But um, to try to share the scripture with you and uh, be able to uh, trust that the Lord might uh, help us to to just give consideration to uh, the truth of His Word, Joshua chapter number fourteen. If you would, let's stand as we read verses 6 through 9 together. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son 
of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years ago was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And then if we might just, uh, though I haven't uh, announced it, just read one verse from Numbers chapter 14 and verse 24. Just thought I'll go ahead and lay out the, the whole scope of the scripture. Numbers chapter 14 and verse number 24 is, a, is another text that, that complements what we've been reading. Numbers 14 verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land wherein to he went, and his seed shall possess it. Let us pray, please. Lord, we are grateful for the privilege of sharing your word. We thank you for those that have been so kind and faithful and supportive, those who have shared in prayers that we don't realize, but we do know, Lord, that there have been those that have, have a desire to be here, and they've come out once more this evening. We pray that you'll give us truth for our hearts, direction for our walk with you, and Lord, for the, the privilege, we thank you, and now for the Holy Spirit to help us as we speak and as we hear, we ask, and we'll just thank you in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'd like to consider the question this evening, can a person serve God with their whole heart? A lot of people interested in dabbling in religion and having a little spot in church and doing a little something and talking about God and praying and, and uh, reading the Bible a little, but can a person serve God with their whole heart? Fully dedicated to living for Him. Desiring to please him. There would be some that would think that is unrealistic and impossible that you cannot serve God with your whole heart. It, it's just, it's just uh, beyond uh, any ability that we have and we ought not to expect it of ourselves, of anyone else. That, that Just the, the way that we are, the way that the temptations of life are, the challenges, that you, you just really can't, you can't do that. And so, some feel that it's acceptable to just partially serve God. That is, you just give Him what's convenient. Just, just uh, if, if it fits in and if it doesn't disturb us too much, you know, that, that's acceptable. Or, or give God what's left over. You know, just, we, we, we don't need this time or this money or, or this amount of energy. And so, we, we can give it to Him. One of our second best. It's, it's all right. We're giving him something. We're, we're doing something for him. I'd like to see this evening how that you can serve God with your whole heart. Amen. Are you interested? <laughs> Maybe there's someone here who says, I, I, I know I don't. I, I didn't think I could. Well, if I show you in the scriptures that it's possible, Good. if we talk about some examples and and, and realize what God wants to do for us. Would you like to step beyond the, the, the plateau that you've been on and, and move up to higher ground? Would it interest you to, to really serve God all, all in all, out and out? That's good. Yes, if that is your desire this evening, you can be fully committed to God. Amen. Yes, I will tell you that it requires you to be sold out to Him. <laughs> Yes, that means that we've, we've given him all that there is. We've surrendered our all to him. But if you choose to do so, you can. For we're looking at a man who made that choice. 
His name is Caleb. And when you look at Caleb, the Bible does not tell us much about him at all. There's really no obvious reason as to why he would reach that spiritual level of being someone that's sold out to God. Because he really did not come from a special family. He, he's not from some, some line of, of priest or some special uh, group of, of, of uh, people. Caleb is not known for any special education. Don't know uh, that he ever had a chance to, to, to do much in school. That didn't have any special degrees along with his name. He's really not mentioned for any of his, his special abilities in the sense that he could uh, preach, he could speak, he could do anything in the sense that, that made, made him be a special talented person. He does not come with a position. He's not a man that's, that's known as, as being a leader on a certain level as far as having some, some special sp position. But in spite of all of those common aspects that just says he's down where the rest of us live, there are three testimonies that are given concerning his walk with God. We see here in uh, verses 6 through 8, Caleb's personal testimony. The, the portion of the scripture that we, we read in Joshua chapter 14 is Caleb talking to Joshua, asking for the land that Moses had promised him. And Caleb's testimony can be just summarized at the end of verse number 8 when he says, I wholly followed the Lord my God. Caleb's personal testimony as he's, as he's making uh, request and desiring what God has, has offered to him, he says, I'm, I'm saying these things because I've wholly followed the Lord. The way that Caleb can have a, a personal testimony like that is that he made a decision one day. Because if you're ever going to be sold out to God, you're not going to do it a piece at a time. It's not going to be something like a yard sale. You put a little more out there and then a little more out and, and we're going to go a little farther. But there's a time when we sell him all that there is. That is, we give it all over to God and we say, Lord, I'm, I'm going all through with you. I've, I've been here and, and I found that you're good to your word and, and you've forgiven me and I've been here and you've, you've helped with this issue and you've taken me through this dark valley and, and Lord, I've got some, some places along the line. But you know what? I want to reach the point now where I'm all out and given to you. <laughs> Sold out. Caleb says there was a time when I decided and I chose to wholly follow the Lord my God. Because he made that decision, it was not by accident. He didn't just sort of seep along a little farther each day and get a little closer to being in God's will in a, in a complete sense. He didn't just get there because of old age, though he's a man that's, that's 80 years old. Age does not mature us spiritually. We can be an immature Christian at, at 50, 60, or 70, or we can be a mature one at 20. And I mean that in the sense of where we stand with God. More to learn, farther to go, we keep growing, but there can be a time where we say, Lord, I have made a choice. I've decided where I want to stand with you, and I want you to have all of me. I'm going to wholeheartedly follow you. For you must decide how you're going to serve God. Are you going to do what's convenient? Are you going to serve Him merely in a sense that's respectable or fashionable, approved by others and considered pretty, pretty decent of a, a kind of person? Or are you going to make an all-out commitment? Amen. That is when we place our plans and our relationships and our decisions in His hands. When we're a sold out individual as Caleb was, we say, Lord, I've given it to you. I'm placing it in your hands. I, cho I choose to put you first. Amen. Lord, I decide that I'm going to follow you and I desire to please you in every way. I love a couple places in, in uh, John, I believe it is, that, that Jesus says, I do those things always that please God. Amen. There, there's something that's so sweet about that. It doesn't say, I keep His commands, though He did. I always do what's right. 
But there's something about saying, I want to please God. It touches my heart. It says, I'm not just trying to get by. I'm not just trying to have someone else approve. But if God is pleased with me. You know, there's just something that, that surpasses anything of trying to measure up with someone else's rules or expectations and being in harmony with the Heavenly Father that says, Lord, I want to please you. I want what you want to be part of my life. I desire the things that you desire. That, that's my longing. And Caleb was that kind of a person that says, I want to please him. There's, there's an, there's a, it's a different motive, we might say. It comes from something more than, than I have to or I ought to or, or I feel someone else is looking over my shoulder and I'm going to please them. But Lord, because you're my, my Savior, my Lord, I want, I want your smile of approval. I want to please you. Oh, there's such a difference between doing something for your wife because you have to and doing something for her because you just want to please her. You know, there's, a, there's such a great difference in, in relationships where, where there's a, a, a longing to be what you can be the best because you long to please them. Caleb says, Lord, I, I've, I've fully, I have fully followed you. He made that decision, and, and then in, in order to follow him, he had to stay consistent. Staying consistent is not something that's common. It's not always what's popular. Folks would rather you, you bend a little bit this way or, or bend a little way the other. I was reading a, a story about a man that was uh, serving in a, a bank as a, a, a secretary, uh, helping one of the, the, uh, the managers, and the manager said, if I get any calls today, tell them that I'm out. He said, oh, so you're going to be leaving? No, I just, just tell them I'm going to be out. Well, being a, a Christian, the, the man said, uh, so you want me to lie for you? Uh, that's not the word he had in mind. Uh, no, uh, you know, and, and he became upset at the man because uh, the, the, the secretary didn't want to do that. And, and feeling pressure, the, 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 younger, the younger man said, well, look at it this way, sir. If I won't lie for you, you can be sure that I won't lie to you. <laughs> you know, be, being consistent, the, the, the world doesn't always understand the benefits of it. They'd rather kind of sway in the, sway in the wind. But, but this person that we're looking at as an example said, I'm going to stay consistent. Now, that caused problem because he ran into some opposition from, from those that, that were a part of, of, of his surrounding acquaintances. The story is, is, is sort of summarized here as... Uh, we read there in verse 7 and verse number 8 how that Caleb was one of the spies that, that went into the promised land after they had made their escape out of Egypt, their deliverance, and received the Ten Commandments. And God had them there at the border before too long. It was just a few months. The plan was when you get out of Egypt, you get into Canaan. <laughs> That's what God's plan is. <laughs> it's not part of the original uh, blueprint that you wander around in the desert for 40 years. <laughs> Some may choose to take that route, but just want you to know that what God says is that he plans on us getting on in. And Caleb was some of those that, that were there at the border, went on in to, to just check things out. And, and as they spied out the land, it says they saw fruit and, and there was plenty and it describes how that there was uh, two men that brought back a, a cluster of grapes on a pole between them. It doesn't tell their name, but I bet it was Joshua and Caleb. The rest of them were scared to death because there's tall walls and there's big giants and they're scared to death. But Caleb and Joshua would come out with this giant cluster of grapes. I mean, each one must have looked like a grapefruit, uh, just the one grape in itself. And, and they, they came out and, and brought a word of, of encouragement and, and uh, said, you know, the Lord has blessed us. And, and uh, as, as it's described, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. They just all lost their courage. They said, we, we can't do it. We're, we're not going to be able to. And, and it's it just, just we ought not to go. But Caleb says, you know, I've been following the Lord wholeheartedly when I started this journey. And I followed him through the Red Sea, and I followed him with my whole heart, and I've gone and spied out the land, and yes, there are giants, and there are high-walled high cities, but you know what? I'm still wholly following the Lord. There's ten that say we can't do it, but I say we can, because I'm following the Lord. And so... The rest of them came over and patted him and said, we appreciate your courage and positive outlook. No, not at all. It says they picked up stones and we're going to stone them. Yes, 
That, you talk about persecution for trying to live a life that's consistent. <laughs> you talk about the downside of, of trying to be a person that wholly follows the Lord. And the way that God averted it is that He descended in a cloud. His presence, His sense that he was pleased and that he was watching over his servants. Caleb stayed consistent as he testifies to wholly following the Lord. You know, the Christian and the crowd will have opposing views. It's, it's been that way from back in the Bible days and it'll be that way until Jesus comes. For that reason, Paul wrote that the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. He said, I'm dead to what they think and what they want me to be. Why? Because you can't be following the world and following Jesus too. You're going to have to go one way or the other. You can sway back and forth and say, today I'm following this one and today I'm following that one. But you can't do that and say, I wholly followed the Lord God. For part of following Him is following Him consistently, following Him day by day and being certain that whatever comes that that's already been settled and been decided. I wonder this evening, are you concerned about God's opinion or others' opinion? Which one weighs heaviest on you? Which one sways your view? For the consistent believer knows what they believe. They have decided, they have settled it, they sing the song, I have settled the question, hallelujah. <laughs> I have decided. And so, for more than 40 years through the wilderness, Caleb had served the Lord. He had made that decision. He had stayed consistent. And now he had that personal assurance. You know, some folks might even say that such a testimony as this is wrong. You ought not to say, I wholly followed the Lord my God. You can't do that. You, 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 you know that you are just human. Well, whatever a human being is and whatever Caleb was and over all the 80 years with the fumbles and the mistakes or whatever he made, he said, when it comes down to my relationship with God, how I walk and the choices I made, I wholly followed him. That's good. That's good. There's room for all kinds of errors and misunderstandings and, and limitations and a heart that is right with God and, and, and dedicated to being the best. There, there's no contradiction there to saying that I have to apologize to someone or I ought to do something better or, or whatever else happens. We love to just, just blow these little uh, you know, human side up and, and just sort of give ourselves an out so that we can go down some side road. But I want you to know that the person whose heart is right with God says, I love him and I'm going to serve him and I'm going to wholly follow him. Caleb had that personal assurance. He knew for himself he makes this statement of commitment that that is what he has done. A person that says they love their spouse with all their heart, I don't believe anyone would argue with them. If you say, I've been faithful and I love the person that I've married, who's going to say, oh no, you can't do that. No, there's no way. There's too many temptations. There's too many opportunities. There's no way that you could do that. We don't tell someone that. When they make that declaration, we say, wonderful. We're glad for the commitment. We're sure that that was a choice you made. That's how you live. It's obvious. Everyone knows. And in the same sense, we can, we can make that declaration as the Lord knows the desire of our heart to say, I'm, I've wholly followed him. I, I have made that my choice. And you can know it just as well as someone would say they have wholly loved their husband or wife you can say that that's how you have loved the Lord. You can give that testimony. You can share in that same experience that Caleb had as a man that sold out to God. Yes, that was the testimony that he gave, but also like to notice in verse number 9 that it was the testimony that Moses gave. For as Caleb is referring back to what happened on the day that he came back, from Kadesh Barnea, and how that Moses spoke in verse 9 and said, The land where you've trodden on shall be thine, thy inheritance and thy children's forever. Why? Because Moses says, Thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. 
I don't know if you'd ever let someone else testify for you, but that's what Moses did for Joshua. He said, I'd like to say a, a good word on, on my friend Caleb's uh, behalf. <laughs> As Moses spoke for Caleb, he said, you know, I've been with him over all the years. He's been a part of those that have chosen to walk with God. I've seen his character. I know who he is. And you know what? He has wholly followed the Lord my God. The truth gets out. Yes. People may not know the first thing about theology or doctrine or Bible, but they are so sharp with spiritual matters. I mean that in the sense they know what you have or what you don't have. They know what's real or what's not real. They understand if you are some sort of a, a, a fine show on, on one day and somewhat of an inferior sample on the next day. Yes, he said, I'd like to, to testify that he has wholly followed the Lord. And you know, a wholehearted Christian will be recognized. Amen. It'll be known. You say, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that that's, that's a possibility for me. Well, my friend, it, it's not if we can be spectacular. It's just if we can do what's right. right. It's not if we can be flashy. It's not what, what we might be able to, to put out as, as our own personal de demonstration. But you as a Christian are putting out fruit. Everyone's bearing fruit, and you know what? The world's sampling it. They're, they're tasting a little here, and they're trying a little there. And your cup gets bumped sometimes, and what spills out, they find out what you've got on the inside. It all, it all kind of come, comes around, may not be immediately, but they will know, and your life will be revealed. Moses said, I will testify for Caleb and declare he's wholly followed the Lord. Yeah. And because of that, he knew of Caleb's reward. He said, for that reason, the land that you walked over, it's going to be your inheritance because you've been faithful to the Lord and you wholly followed Him. Yes. Right. He knows and He promises that He's going to reward you for your faithfulness. Yes. Caleb had to wander all over the wilderness because of the sins of others. But when it came time to gain the promised land, he inherited Hebron as an inheritance yes. for himself. And beyond the fact that he had the privilege of saying that he was going to receive that promised land, his inheritance meant that he had something to pass on to his family. Yeah. You notice where it says, it's not only for thine inheritance, but for thy children's forever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good news for the poorest of us. Yeah. You say, what am I going to leave my family? What is it that, that's going to be passed on that's going to have any merit? You know, there's some blessings that we receive in heaven and there's some that are left behind. And if we have lived a life that's wholly dedicated to the Lord, we have something to leave behind. Proverbs 13, 22 declares that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So you think, well, if I'm good, I'll, I'll set something aside so I can leave to, for my children. No, no, that's not the way I want you to look at it. A good man, a person who has lived a good life, wholly followed the Lord, he leaves an inheritance for his children and their children's children. It's not the goods that he leaves, but the life that he's lived. Yes, yes. And every good person leaves an inheritance of their life and their influence. And the one who's wholly followed the Lord as Caleb has left something that the family can treasure, that others can follow behind, that they can know that it was real and it's something that's precious. Yes, he knew that Caleb had something to leave for his children. When we wholly follow the Lord, our children will benefit from it. They'll have an inheritance. There'll be a pattern for them to know how that you live for God. <laughs> Moses said, I'll testify for him. I'll give witness to the fact that Caleb has wholly followed the Lord. But then we read also, over in Numbers 14, verse number 24, how that there was one more that testified on behalf of Caleb. 
And it, it is the Lord who speaks and calls his servant Caleb and said, because he had another spirit with him, he hath followed me fully. We have a faithful witness here, the one who knows all. We're moving from one man's testimony to an observer's testimony to God's witness. And he puts the final stamp of approval to alleviate any doubts or questions. And he says, yes, Caleb was for real. <laughs> God declares that he has followed me fully. Caleb, that man who was as human as the rest of us, that one who had his stumblings, his heart was right with God. If you're looking for the opportunity and the possibility of fully following God, without a doubt, the Bible encourages us that it is possible. Yes, sir. For this man who gave his life in serving God and the Lord witnessed to it is a challenge to us. Does God really expect us to fully follow him? To wholly, completely follow him? Jesus said, we're to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Amen. And when you put that alongside the picture of holy following God, I think that it, uh, it echoes. <laughs> yeah. To holy follow Him is to love Him with all, our, all of our heart, our soul, and mind. Yes. It says a complete devotion, a complete dedication. And what I find is that the Bible does not give us a secondary plan. You want to serve God, you want to keep His commandments, you want to please Him. Let's just start with the one at the top, number one. Jesus said this is the greatest, to love God with all our heart. He said this is where you need to be aiming. This is what you need to take care of first. For if you love me, then you'll keep my commandments, Jesus said. People seem to desire to live on some other level of commitment, some other level with God. But he keeps pointing to the higher ground. He keeps saying, notice, beware of, of what, I, what I have called you to. For I believe that in spite of what is so common today in, in sort of a self-centered religion, what I get out of it and what I want to do with it, God calls us to be sold out to Him. You may have a lot to offer Him in who you are or what you can do or or what your promises are, or you may feel that you don't have much, but he still just asks the same of all of us. Will you be sold out to me? Will you love me with all your heart, all your soul? Yes, I believe the key is found there in that, that verse that we read as Numbers 14, 24 gives the testimony of God. When he says that Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, hath followed me fully. He had another source of power. He had another, another source of strength. He had another spirit that was within him. The question is if you want to consider this the Holy Spirit or not, I'm glad that there's enough commentators that agree with me that I can say that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, with those who say without a doubt it's more than just the idea that he had a different attitude. But he had a different spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that abides within a soul that cleanses and that empowers and that purifies and that with that source, that is how we can wholly follow the Lord. Amen. It is not in our willpower. It's not in our, our desire to, to do better or to somehow be, be a better person. But Caleb had a relationship with God that the others did not know about. Well, I understand it's a different time frame and we're talking Old Testament, we're living in New Testament, but I'll tell you what, the good news, if he could do it in the Old Testament, can we not do it in the New Testament? If God says, I come to pour out my blessing of the fullness of my spirit upon you, is it not possible that we might follow his example to wholly follow the Lord our God? Oh, how I, how I desire for him to work in my life and for him to raise up people that have that, that passion and that longing that they're going to do more than just know about him and be, be interested in him. Yes, to have that relationship that, that surpasses the others. 
It was because of this other spirit, this fullness of God's presence, that Caleb had a confidence. He had an assurance. While others are filled with fear and doubt, they're wanting to run from the giants. They're wanting to give up and go back to Egypt. And we too will want to do the same unless God has His way in our hearts. Unless we are sold out to God, we'll find ourselves wanting to go back to the old way. But he said, I hold no reserves. I give my life wholly to God. If we're going to follow God with our whole heart, that means we're going to have to be emptied of ourselves to be filled with His Spirit. You cannot wholly follow God and be having self, making the calls, swaying your opinion, directing your heart. You have, to, you have to come to a place where you decide which is it going to be. Am I going to have my way? And, and, and when the final, the final decisions are made, just, it's got to, got to be the way I want it. Or am I going to finally say, Lord, it's all yours. <laughs> it's completely in your hands. Yes, we can be wholeheartedly His. It was the mighty leader, soul winner, minister, William Booth, that was known for his great work among uh, the lost and, and, and working with the Salvation Army, that someone asked him towards the end of his life what the secret of his success was. William Booth said, God has had all there was of me to have. He says there's other men that had more opportunities, but he said the day that I got the poor of London on my heart and a vision of what God could do, he said, I made up my mind that God would have all there was of William Booth. And if there's anything of the power of the Salvation Army today, it's because God has had all the adoration of my heart, all the power of my will, and all the influence of my life. Amen. What he's saying is that God has had all there is of me to have. Are there things that clutter your heart? The parts of self Desire that somehow still says, I want to have my way. I want you to know that there's a freeing power through God's presence and through the Holy Spirit. You can have the same testimony that Caleb had. You can serve God with your whole heart. You can give the testimony, I've wholeheartedly followed God. Those who look upon it as Moses did can say they wholeheartedly follow God. And then when we reach the end of our life, that the Lord might speak of us as he spoke of his faithful servant and says he's fully followed me. I would urge you to be satisfied with nothing less. And if you're not there, make that your determination that you want to be one of the wholehearted followers of God, Amen. that you're going to give him your whole heart and live for him with your whole being. Thank you for allowing us to share with you through this week. Pray that God will continue to build your church and strengthen you and help you individually to be the person that God wants you to be. Would you stand? Let us close with prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we conclude our time together, thank you for these precious people that have been so kind and so faithful and Lord are, are serving you here in Muncie, Indiana. Will you continue to direct and build this church? We pray, Lord, that for those that do not have the testimony of a wholehearted service, a complete commitment to you, that you'll make them hungry. Lord, that you'll stir and give them a desire that they'll be settled, satisfied with nothing less. Lord, we pray that you'd be with Brother and Sister Turner, encourage their souls, enable them to do what their heart desires, keep their vision sharp. And Lord, may you continue to build your kingdom through this congregation. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.